I'm on Lake Winnebago at the mouth of the Fox River, and on either side, Menasha. We're in Menasha, meaning we're in the Fox Valley, meaning that there is water everywhere. Um, Lake Winnebago, the Fox River right over there. This is the canal that, hey, hey, John. Hey, John. How are you? Pretty good. So a few seasons ago, we did Nina, uh -huh. and now this season, we're, we're doing the other side, Menasha. Yeah, they've always been twin cities, John, yeah. uh, but they actually began as one settlement. And the reason is geography. Uh, this is where the Fox River empties from Lake Winnebago on its way to Green Bay. Mm. And the outlet actually had two channels, and they were about a mile apart. They reconnect just uh, downstream from us to form Doty Island. And they both drop about 10 feet early on. So what you had here was what they call Winnebago Rapids. Mm. And it was obviously a great site for water power. And when did Winnebago Rapids become Nina Menasha? Real early. At first, there was one partnership that tried to develop both channels. And the partners decided to go their own separate ways, not amicably, uh, back in the 1840s. So Menasha developed here, right here on the North Channel, that means island in the native tongue, and Nina develops on the South Channel, that means running water. Hmm. They became fierce rivals, and the issue was always water power. And who won? <laughs> they, they both won. Oh, they did. Uh, they both built dams, they both attracted industries, uh, but Menasha won the contest for state canal improvements back in the 1850s. So by 1856, the canal right here was carrying steamships from Fond du Lac and Oshkosh all the way down to Green Bay. What that meant is that Menasha became the more industrial mm. of the Twin Cities. So the riverfront was just lined with factories. Uh, by 1900, Menasha had 30 plants employed around 2,500 workers. And making what? All kinds of things, John. Uh, pumps, pulleys, books. And my favorite product was lumberjack socks. Oh, yay. <laughs> but by far, the biggest employer was right across the canal. That was Menasha Pale and they became the largest woodenware manufacturer on the planet. Mm. Uh, they made pails, they made barrels, they made butter tubs, they made washboards, and they mm. made wooden clothespins by probably the, the millions. So by 1900, Menasha Pale employed more than half the town's workforce. And the owner was a Yankee named Elisha, Elisha Smith, who became a leading citizen, uh, gave money for a library, used to stand right here before they moved a few blocks north uh, back in the 60s, and gave land for what's now Smith Park in Doty Island. And is Mr. Smith's company still around? Still is. Now it's called the Menasha Corporation. Oh, okay. uh, headquarters south of here. Okay. Uh, and they've long since switched to plastic and cardboard products. The last wooden pail was made back in 1957. Wow. <laughs> all, all these factories, who worked there? Uh, the same mix of immigrants you have elsewhere in Wisconsin. Uh, Menasha's workforce was largely German, Polish, mm. Irish. Nina was also attracting industries, and both cities made the transition gradually to paper manufacture. So early 1900s, the Fox Valley becomes Paper Valley, and Nina and Ash were right at the heart of it. And the economy today? Paper's still a big deal in the Valley, John, but there's also been a lot of attrition. As you can see, Menasha's waterfront is no longer as industrial as mm -hmm. it once was. It's also given the city a lot of redevelopment opportunities, and this work began back in the 1980s. Now Menasha has a downtown marina, a really nice river walk complete with housing, and parkland where there used to be just factories and mills. Population? About 18,000, and still largely German, Polish, and Irish, but also about 7% Latino. And the boundaries? The city of Menasha covers seven square miles at the very northwestern tip of Lake Winnebago, right where the Fox Valley starts. Oh, good. And good biking? Good biking, yeah. There's a great friendship trail here. I haven't been on it yet. I'm going to have lunch with you and then take off for the trestle trail. It goes across Little Lake Butamore and then on into the countryside. Will you take a nap in between? I know. I no. think so. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, John. See you, John. So this has nothing to do with what you make. See that right there? This, this is what you do. That is our product. That's found in almost every single roll of toilet paper or paper toweling in North America. This is the beginning of our manufacturing process. It's basically a giant blender. We couldn't come to Menasha without talking about paper, and you talk about the Fox Valley, and that's the first thing yeah, you talk about. Yeah, and there's a nickname, the Paper Valley, right? At right. one point, there were 18 paper mills between Oshkosh and Green Bay that were in this area manufacturing paper. We've been in operation continuously since 1888 making paper. 
Yeah. Were they always making this stuff? We've always been making recycled paperboard here. You have. We make about 450 tons of material a day that's already pre-cut to be sent to our customers to then they will self-manufacture that into their finished cans, industrial tubes and cores, or cores that are gonna be manufactured for toilet paper. This yeah. is an example of our finished product. And they will then utilize our slit stock yeah. to manufacture this core. This is what I think of when I think of a paper mill, something that big on a sure. roll, that big, in a room this huge. In a room this and big. How long before it ends up here? Probably takes about us two hours to process from raw material to finished. That's it? That's all. Two hours. Correct. We employ 115 people. Great. Um, we work 24-7. Most paper mills are running 24 hours, seven days a week. We have a maintenance staff of about 20 employees. You do? Correct. Yeah. And they work very, very hard to keep the equipment. They know how operating. to keep it going. Not all of our equipment's from 1888. We'll ship out about 20 to 25 trucks of finished paper a day. Yeah. It's not very glamorous, but... It's remarkable, though. So every time I finish my roll of toilet paper, I can think of this place? You can think of us. Can I think of you? That's correct. <laughs> What does Faith do? So Faith actually started out many, many years ago as an electrical contractor. Okay. But since then, you know, through our customers' expectations and, and, and through our people wanting to grow and, and keep diversifying, we really became kind of an energy and technology expert, providing solutions holistically to our customers. This is our customer center. So what do we have? Virtual reality. Okay. Where are you? Ethan. I'm in the uh, Accelerate building that we're building in Little Shoot. These guys from Little Shoot would come here to understand the space, it's yeah. Gotten. So as you're laying it out, you get a chance to actually see what it'll look like. This is one of the innovation labs? Yes, this is one of our partner innovation labs. So some of the products that our partners have, like Schneider Electric and APC, a lot of these devices are smart devices. So these are the ones that, that can analyze the loads and that type of stuff. So this equipment really analyzes this building that we're sitting in now. And the coolest part about this building is we were able to reduce the energy consumption of this building in about three years by 30, 35%, I believe, is what we're at today. So we're using 35% less, less energy in this building today than when we opened it. When we had less than 100 employees in this building, now we have 400 employees in this building. And you're now using, using less energy. We actually have 3,000 employees, really supporting a national presence. So we're a national contractor, a national engineering firm, yeah. um, doing work all over the country, uh, based here out of Menasha. Downtown Menasha Main Street has it all. Breakfast and lunch at the Weather Vane. Children's boutique at Lemon Loves Lime has an ice cream shop. Come on. A great woman's clothing store and Esther's attic. It's gorgeous. Great art, great gifts, wild apple my kind of place renewed and reclaimed. Get coffee at your daily grind. And when you get to the end of the block, do not miss club liquors. This was a General Electric store because at that time, your General Electric appliances were all sold in a store. Yeah, and this is your store. Yes, it is. And there's a bar next door that's yours as well, right? My son. Your son's. How long have you been in this operation? Uh, around 50 years. 50 years? In the beginning, you had beer, whiskey. Yeah. Then wine came along. At that time, it was picnic for all beer. Beer, 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 beer. Sure. And one day, a guy came in and he said, yeah, we got to get some beer. So they get some beer and they piled it up. And then one of them said, you know, we probably ought to take some wine. And I'll, it was, I was like, oh my God, they're going to buy wine to go to a picnic? I just was just. You have an entire division of wine. I know it. The variety of things out there and people's drinking habits have changed. You oh, know. they have him at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gin's back. Gin is back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoever thought that. I thought once they, this one area of storage. I love that the store offers you your wine, any type of liquor. You can find some good cheese. I saw your. Yeah, sure. Can you get glassware here? Yeah. You can. Yes. We rent glasses. Oh, you do? Yeah. How many extra do we need? 100, 200, oh, 300, wow. 400. You've got it. Yeah. People like to have it in a glass that it belongs in. That it belongs in. Yeah. Yeah. So a highball. If somebody... They don't want to drink the champagne out of a jelly jar. Do they? Yeah. Can't do that. And there you go. That's out. Remember that. No drinking out of jelly jars. You know where everything is? Yeah. What do, what do you want? <laughs> I'll go get it for you. So Menasha is surrounded by water, so what should they have? They should have a great marina. And can I tell you, they do. What a beautiful marina. 
let's take a walk down this way. So okay. we're um, we're right in front of Lake Winnebago. Right. And we are looking which way? We're looking uh, basically east. south. Oh, looking south. Yeah. So the lake turns into the river. Yeah. Comes in in Oshkosh and comes through the lake and flows out here and then goes up north to to Green Bay. You know, there's not too many rivers that flow north in the United States. <laughs> it's it's great. How long have you lived here? Uh, my parents had this house. Oh, they did? And so I was born in 1930, and the house was built in 1927. OK. So I lived here all my life. Yeah. Is this the original house that your father built? Yes. What happened was my dad, in 1926, bought uh, this property from a Mrs. Bergstrom, who uh, lived uh, on the end of Kai Street. And this was kind of a farm. Originally, there weren't, you know, like three or four homes down here. Right. And then uh, eventually, uh, I think there's about 28. It's a nice, quiet area, but yet you're close to town. Yeah. And is life really kind of controlled by the water? Kind of an interesting time of the year, actually, is in the late winter here, because there's some fish that die. And this is open because of the current in the, from the river. And the dead fish come underneath the ice and into the open water. And sometimes we can have 25 or 30 eagles here coming to feed on those fish. They sit Dinner the, time. And sit, sit on the trees over here. Yeah. And uh, they're kind of fun. If you like to watch eagles, they're there. <laughs> sad, sad this is called Porcha Palooza, Porcha right? Palooza, yeah. This is really remarkable. I've never seen anything like this before. I've never heard of anything it's like wonderful. this before. It's there wonderful. There are a few models like this around the country, but we really started it here in you Menasha. Did. And I really think of it as a Menasha thing. It's sort of the perfect Menasha music festival. A teeny weeny bit of this is the Jefferson Park neighborhood, and they decided a few years ago that what they wanted to do was to bring everybody together around music. And so we found a number of musicians who live in the neighborhood and outside of the neighborhood to come in and play music all on the same night on one or two blocks. On so, people's porches. On people's porches, yeah. I just uh, talked to somebody who was on a boat who heard it and oh. was like, um, what's going on? And it's like, <laughs> this is the best. Yeah. A lot of the people here are from the neighborhood. They are. But uh, we like to also showcase the neighborhood. Sure. You know, bring people in to see what a great neighborhood it is. Yeah. What was I thinking? What was I drinking? The primary what thing they I wanted to work on was social connection. And there will be six to eight to ten musicians playing. So everyone's standing, talking, meeting people, and then listening, and then sort of moving on. Everyone is saying, I both saw a bunch of people that I knew, and I met new people. Here, it's as much about the people yeah. as, as it is the music. How yeah. often does this happen? Generally do one or two for the season. For, for the, the season, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're at Heckrat's uh, Wetland Reserve. Have you been to this place? It's kind of remarkable. It's uh, This is the beginning of a three-mile loop that's accessible to all. It's loved and completely supported by this community. It's a lot of wildlife, it's a lot of nature, and it's right here in Menasha. Heckrat's. This is Fox City's Habitat for Humanity, and we're talking about Rock the Blocks, right? They're rocking the block today, right? We're rocking the block today, yeah. John. Let's talk about this initiative. How did this happen? It started in Des Moines. In Des Moines. And we were the second Rock the Block affiliate to start. We started Rock the Block in Appleton, and we were anticipating maybe eight or 10 projects in that neighborhood. We ended up with 31 projects in that neighborhood. Just keep going. There's different uh, things that are going to happen to each house on the, on the block? Yep. Every house is different. Every yeah. homeowner's needs is different. We're looking to replace roofs, replace windows, replace yeah. siding, vegetation removal, painting, porch leveling, you name it. Exterior impactful repairs we're doing with homeowners, not for them, with them. I love the fact that you're really so involved with it all, that it's really working together. Yeah, yeah, you have to be. So we personally engage every homeowner in this neighborhood. So you were working on your gutters? Yes. I see they're putting on doors. They are putting in new inside doors and um, screen doors. They are fixing my fence panel. They're also working on my garage. They're going to put aluminum, so that's going to be low maintenance now. It's been amazing. There will always be work but we can always see the effect of the work that we're doing and the impact it has on families yeah. that, the, that are living in a house that has a leaky roof. We can see the effect of those repairs, those immediate repairs now. We can see how that's improving their quality of life now. And we can see how that's spreading in the neighborhood as well. Rock the Block is the spark 
that starts neighborhood revitalization. And we've yeah. seen that. We've yeah. seen that in neighborhoods that we've worked on. So Rock the Block's been happening for three years in this community. Yes. How many homes have you touched? We have done 300, over 330 That's projects. Amazing. Yeah. And, and, and with how many volunteers? Over 4,000 volunteers. That's remarkable. Yeah. This is the Isle of Valor, which is a memorial to all of those who served, especially the two recipients of the Medal of Honor, both from Menasha. There's only two cities in the country that have multiple Medal of Honor recipients, and Menasha, Wisconsin is one of them, the Isle of Valor. No matter where we went in Menasha, your steeple was always present. Right. It's the steeple of Menasha. Always present. Mm -hmm. And which is good, too, because then they know that Christ is in our community, too. This church was built in 1883. Uh -huh. The church was founded in 1867, the parish was, so it's about 152 years ago. And it hasn't changed much since it's being built, has it? A few modifications after the Second Vatican Council, but much, most of what you see is original. We have about 1,300 families. We're with Bernice, who is a, a member of this parish. That's right. How are you? I'm fine. Have How you been you? a member long? Well, for as long as, I would say, 58 years. 58 years? Yeah. Well, then if somebody asks you that again, I would say yes, a very long time. Yeah, very long time, <laughs> yes. And did your kids go to school here? They went to school 12 years. They were <laughs> baptized, confirmed, married. Yeah. This is your family's parish is what this is. This it is now. Yeah. Yeah. This is very much like the parish I grew up in, which was a German parish oh, on the yeah, east side oh, of the day. German, yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep. And, and St. John's is the Polish um, parish. This is a sizable parish. Yes, it is. So that Link Parish has, has 1,300 families? Yes, and the volunteers here are amazing. And not only internal, um, but what Bernice does um, and the other 20 plus individuals that we have on the care ministry team are just amazing. Right. Um, they outreach to our parishioners that can't get to church or might be just ill for a little bit. Anybody that's Catholic and wants communion or needs that prayer, they will go and service mm -hmm. them as well. They're not just, well, it's just a St. Mary's or St. John. John, sure. parishioner, they are there for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really neat. I am on the Trestle Trail, which is part of Loop the Lake, which is a three miles over four bridges, over three bodies of water. You can bike it, you can walk it, you can run it, you can bring your dog. If you're in the Menasha area, you should not miss this. Michael, we're in Menasha. It's the home of the Blue Jays. And where are we? Calder Stadium. Yeah. Yeah, home field for the Menachee Blue Jays. 900 kids in the school, John. Okay. What we're doing here is it's called uh, Toughness Tuesday. 6.30 in the morning they get here, leadership training. 7.30 and they get out on the field and they get after it. Early Tuesday morning, 70 kids here. Boys and girls. Boys and girls. These are high involved. school kids. A lot of them in the football program, but they've developed a thing called MASS, which is Menasha Athletic Speed and Strength, yeah. and any athletes can get involved. It's a really wonderful program. It's great, and they've been doing this how long? They've been doing this for about six years. Jeremy Korth is the head coach. Yeah. He is a special ed teacher in the middle school here in Menasha. Went to Menasha High School right out of college, got hired here, and has now taken over the program. Yeah. And him and his staff have done a great job. State champions 2014, the first state championship of any sport in the school. It's easy when, when you're winning all the time. Yeah. Well, they haven't won all the time, and the community still backed them. 2003, they started turning it around, and they've fully turned this thing around. Look, Look, my money is always going to be on Menashe after seeing stuff like this. Good job. Thanks. This is the Bridge Tower Museum, which I believe, I'm just going to say, that this has got to be one of the smallest museums in the world. And I love the fact that if there is a, a boat coming down the river and this bridge is forced to come up, you are forced to leave the museum. Yeah, evacuate. Look. It's a state law. We're at the Barlow uh, Planetarium. What is this exactly? It was the first major planetarium in the state of Wisconsin. It is an amazing classroom. Watch your step, head all the way down to the last seat in the row. There's a bunch of stuff we can do in there that no matter how great your classroom is, yeah. being under a starry sky, having the constellations come up, moving the stars as we want them, having planets float up, it is pretty magical. We serve about 25,000 school kids from the quarter of Wisconsin that is basically Sheboygan to 51 up to the UP, and that's our, our service area. Yeah. We also serve a lot of public. We do shows almost every weekend, yeah. star parties. This is beyond cool. Ooh, look at my thumb. And have a lot of fun, not only promoting astronomy, we promote space, we promote space exploration, uh, we promote science. You guys ready for this? We hold 98 people. Choo, 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 choo. And, and we're really proud of that. We're the largest in the UW system. How did this end up here in Menasha? Well, I think if you go back to 1961, mm -hmm. 
somebody wanted to have a planetarium here. And that planetarium people had access to when they start rebuilding this wing, that, that's when they start planning this one in 98. And when it was installed, it was state of the art. Well, we have multiple projectors. Our main projector is that the one guy? in the center. Yeah. And we still push its limits now, and we have a lot of fun doing that. Another one and only in Menasha is the Weiss Earth Science Museum, which is Wisconsin's mineralogical museum, and it's right next to the Barlow Planetarium, same building, right here in Menasha. I know what you're thinking, is that pole cold? No, that's yarn bombing. You know what that is? It's public art. You can sign up to decorate one of these poles with yarn, and it's called yarn bombing. There's over a dozen of these poles that are filled with um, yarn art. Downtown Menasha, it's a great initiative. Guess what this property used to be? Now look at it. Okay, if I told you there were gas pumps right there, what would you say? It used to be a quick trip. Yeah. Now it's a great bakery. That is how long have you been a baker? Oh, since I was nine years old. Since you were nine. Yeah. So 40 years? <laughs> we're like Come 80. On. We're like 80. We're, we're like, more 80. like 80 years. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Was your dad a baker? My dad was a baker. And what happens at this location compared to the other bakeries? Our artisan breads. Artisan breads happen here. Has this business changed much in the years that you've been doing it? Every, every year. If you had a good product, people will come. They'll come. And what are you going to do with those now? They're going to rest for about five, 10 minutes. They have to rest? Yep, on the bench. They're much like me. <laughs> if you were to talk to somebody in Menasha and mention this bakery, what product do they come here for on a daily basis? I would say the uh, donut product. Definitely carrot cake. Oh my gosh, cookies. Mm -hmm. See these babies here? Mm-hmm. How about cookies? 6,000 dozen we sold at Christmas time. 6,000 dozen? Yeah. Look at that turtle cookie. Mm, I know. It's that really looks good. delicious. We actually toast the pecans with butter and salt. Elephant ears we've had since 1954. And is, is, that, is that your dad's recipe? It is. Very famous donuts are a Persian donut. This is deeper. different than a lot of Persians I've had. Really? Yeah. It's good. We have seven children. Seven. Well, six, six of them are involved in the bakery in yeah. all aspects. Is that right? Mm, six of yeah. the seven children. We have about 120 employees now. Wow. Mm. There's nothing here that I would deny myself. Really? No. It all looks off. really good. It's an almost lunch time. <laughs> This is what I've been told. This is what I should order. Okay. I should order a Mims with half okay. butter, half onion. Okay. Yeah. And they said you have to have a chocolate malt. Make sure it's a malt, not a shake. That's what I heard. Let's talk about the history of this place. So the first location was across the street. The and original that, 1958. But it moved over here in 7980. And Mim was the name of those people. Absolutely. Right? Yes. That was a You're family. You're not the Mims. No. We are no. not the Mims. No, but you had to keep the name. Yes, but and we kept the tradition. And you yes. kept the tradition. Yes. And the recipes of the Mims? Absolutely. You did. Yes. And they used a lot of butter, I see. Absolutely, yeah. they did. <laughs> Can I tell you, you're very popular. We have a huge demographic here. We get young, old. We have customers here that were originally customers at 58. Oh. Thank you. Yes. And they still come in here yet. And they still come in. Mm -hmm. What do people order off their board mostly? Cheeseburgers and steak sandwiches. Yeah. That's our number one. Whatever their idea of a Mims burger yes. is, yeah. that's what they order because some people's version is the steak sandwich is their official Mims burger. Oh, yeah. And other people, it's a cheeseburger, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, what's Some yours? What do, you, what, what do you do when you- when Steak. You, a steak, yeah. Cheeseburger. Yeah. Cheeseburger, <laughs> I think that would be mine as well. What's served on that cheeseburger usually? Uh, butter, onions, and pickles. That's it? That's it. And then you have uh, ketchup and mustard at the table. Yes. yes, and we use brown mustard. Oh, not yellow? No. Oh, why is that? Because that's Mims tradition. Oh, is that okay? All these years that I can still eat a Mims burger every day. Mm. And they're so, it's like outdoor. Like, what kind of grill is this? We actually have hardwood charcoal. Oh, well, you do? We, we, we really oh, use hard, hardwood charcoal. For an inside. It's like magic. Yes. We're an outside taste from an inside place. That's our it's saying, really good. Yes. Well, say it again. Outside taste from an inside place. That's smart. Did you make that up, or was that already here? Sarah did. Sarah did. Our daughter. So now you're going to have to come here every time here in the yeah. area. Yeah. Well, we come time. here to come here. I am so happy I could spend time in Menasha. Now I'll always think of it as a gem in the Fox Valley. We love Menasha. Oh, I do too, thank you. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good town. Good. Here is the drill. It. Okay. Mayor uh, Don Mercus, you have 30 seconds to tell okay. us why um, Menasha, Wisconsin is the best place in the world to work, live, and play. 
and Mayor, you can start now. Well, we like to call Menasha your place on the water, and it's because water is a part of our lifestyle here. We're a community of diverse neighborhoods. We have neighborhoods from historic to new, houses big to small, but no matter what neighborhood you're in, you have great access to all these amenities, the waterfront, the outside, makes Menasha the perfect place to live an active outdoor lifestyle. Yeah. And we're part of the third largest metro area in the state. So on top of that, we Five, also have four, great opportunities three, for two, education one. and employment. Yeah, you're done, that's it, that's perfect. He who walks with thunder is luckier than he who walks with lightning. That guy's dead. <laughs> that's awesome. A, that's half butter? Mm-hmm. Shut up. No. <laughs> John Monash is a lovely place to visit. And our visit would not be possible without the generous support of our underwriters. So underwriters, thank you very much. Thanks. The Greater Milwaukee Foundation's Ernest C. and Florence M. Shockey Fund. And by the David A. and Nancy E. Putz Fund. The Greater Milwaukee Foundation, inspiring philanthropy, serving donors, and strengthening communities now and for the future. Michaels Corporation, serving the energy, transportation, telecommunications, and utility industries. Michaels, constructing North America's infrastructure for our future. We Energy's Foundation at Wisconsin Public Service Foundation are proud to support public television. Together we create a brighter future for the communities we serve. ATC moves electricity from where it's generated to communities where it's needed. American Transmission Company, helping to keep the lights on, businesses running, and communities strong.